Hi, this is Chris from the Project Management Guide. This video is called How to Run Small Projects Effectively. So small projects can be quite challenging to run. And in my previous video, I looked at some of the typical small project challenges that you have and how they come about and, and some of the little things we can do um, to manage them. But in this video, I'm going to go into a bit more detail on how we can start a small project from scratch and some of the things, some of the techniques that we can use. And I'm also going to cover how we um, can take over a, a project in mid-flight as well. So small projects operate under the same constraints as any other project. So you've always got some sort of constraint in terms of time, in terms of how long you've got to deliver the project. You've got, you've got a resources constraint, which might be budget related, or it could be in terms of the people available on your project. And obviously you've also got a, a scope uh, constraint as well in terms of what you've got to deliver, uh, you know, the features and, and the functionality that you've got to deliver as part of the project. So you need a standard process really that you're gonna operate across all your projects. And you need to change that, uh, the way that you operate that framework or the, the method that you deliver your project, depending on the size of the project. So if you're starting a small project from scratch, then you're going to, you're going to adapt your, your project management framework or your project management process the same way as you, as you would for any other project. And I've done other videos on this, um, including the project plan documentation and, 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 and many others. So it's worth checking out some of the other videos in, in this series as well. But what you need to do is you need to stand, operate a standard way of delivering your project. So the first thing to do is to identify the project sponsor and the key stakeholders if you don't know them already. You need to understand the requirements, the scope and the deliverables for your project. You need to then clarify what the project benefits are and the criteria for the success. So you need to talk through those um, with your project sponsor and your stakeholders. And then you've got to set up the delivery team uh, and work with your suppliers to work out how you're going to deliver the project. So you're going to agree a project delivery approach and a delivery schedule. And then finally, you're going to set up a simple uh, governance process that works uh, for your project. So these are all pretty standard uh, project management process things to, to do. But you're going to have to, but in this situation for a small project, you're going to have to scale those back a bit and make them lightweight um, so that you don't end up spending lots of time on heavyweight processes for a, for a small project. So you, if you've been handed a project, a small project um, that's already in flight, I mean, this is quite common that um, one project is handed from one project manager to another. So it's quite common to have these have this sort of situation. So the first job there for the project manager is to work out what state the project is in. So in that situation, the project manager needs to do a project audit. And it is actually can actually be quite advantageous at this point uh, for the project manager because you, because you've got the handover in process um, as part of the uh, handover process, you can work out and validate what the status of the project is. In fact, you actually, of course, you need to do that to understand what the state of the project is in. So you've got that a little bit um, of an advantage, if you like, from the, in, the, in this situation where you can actually, as part of the takeover process, you can validate what state the project is in. So you need to adapt a similar process that you have for, for picking or starting a new project from scratch, but obviously you need to adapt that slightly for the situation that you've got and that you've you picked up a pre-existing uh, project. So you still need, to, still need to document it, you still need to put a lightweight framework in place, process, etc. But you need to do a, a project audit effectively. And that's just a series of asking lots of questions to understand what, what the status of the project is, uh, what the challenges are with the project as it exists now and where therefore you've got to focus your efforts in terms of in terms of taking over the project and, and making sure that it's run effectively. Okay so I've got a whole series of questions that you might ask in your project audit. Now by no means this is not the full list but you know this, these, these certainly will get you on the right track and you need to systemat systematically almost go through your project plan document um, process and you almost fill out the project plan document as I said I've got other video on that for you to you know find out about that um, project plan doc and how you're going to fill it out but you know if you went through that document and filled out each section that would you know that would really help you so the, these are some of the typical questions that I would ask if I was going to do a project audit so the first the first one is I would ask you know what is the project scope of the um, what is the project scope 
um, what has been delivered so far, you know, what else is there to deliver, what's left to deliver in the project. I'd also try to understand what change there is um, in the project. How, how much is, th is there other requirements changing around and, uh, you know, how, how you know, how, what is that, what does that process look like? Is there a lot of change or is there very little change going on in the project? It's important to understand how much change we've got in the project. It's also really important to understand what our relationships are like in, um, in our project. So how is the project team working together with the, with the customer and the project stakeholders and, and the project sponsor? How is, what are all the relationships uh, like on the project? It's sort of key really to the project to understanding how well uh, we can run the project and what our challenges are working with all the different people on the project and the, you know, any suppliers. Then I would sort of try and understand where we are on our timeline and our schedule. You know, when are we forecast to complete the various phases of the project? What does the project schedule look like in terms of milestones? Are we on track with those milestones, etc.? And you know, how are we doing overall? And what are what are our forecasts? And how are we? How do we feel about um, our ability to to hit those hit those milestones? The next one I'd look at, talk to look at is you know what how are we getting on with the delivery team? What is the what does the delivery team feel like, and how are our suppliers performing? Is the team on track to deliver? Have they got any challenges, etc.? And then I would also really deep dive into the what the any challenges on the project are in terms of what the risks are to the timeline or to the budget. You know what what are our big um, risks or big issues. What are the with with our blocking things that are really going to throw us off um, on our time schedule or or our or our deliverables, etc. And then finally, I would I would get get a grip of the budget. I'd sort of try and understand how much we spent. Um, obviously, what our budget was in the first place, and whether we're on track or not um, to deliver um, against all of our criteria in our project. So once we've got our small project, uh, once we've got it all documented, we've we've done a project plan document or a very lightweight cut down version of that. We've basically got the project on track. Uh, we understand what you know where, what we're doing. We're pretty clear about what our deliverables are, our scope, um, what our success criteria are, etc. Then I would implement some really small, lightweight, effective governance, uh, pretty much straight away on the project. So I'd set up the first thing I do is set up some weekly reporting or regular reporting, no more than fortnightly really. And that would just be a really simple uh, summary of where we are on the project. And I wouldn't do any more than a page and it just says what we did this week, uh, what we're planning to do next week, and just a really high level summary of what our challenges and risks are on the project as well. It needs to be re something really uh, lightweight, it, lightweight. And that can be something as simple as an email that just goes out once a week. Um, to the sponsor and the main stakeholders on the project. And it just has to be really lightweight and easy to do. And then I, what I would also do is I'd set up some sort of project governance, uh, project board as well. So that's just a monthly meeting basically with the key, the key stakeholders in the project and the sponsor basically. And that, that just provides a, a, a progress update against the plan and the budget and what the risks are on the project as well. And it's just a, quite a way of keeping the sponsor and the stakeholders very much involved in the project and keeping them informed. But again, it's got to be lightweight. Um, I would do it once a month, certainly no more than an hour for a small project. Or well, you might even want to do it in less than that if you can. But it's important to put these sorts of lightweight governance processes in place to keep the project ticking along and make sure that um, everybody's aware of what the project um, is, you know, you know what its um, challenges are, etc. And also, it's also the project board's a forum for getting decisions made. And uh, normally, a few simple slides, slides should suffice for that, uh, maybe up to 10 slides. It shouldn't, hopefully it shouldn't take you long to prepare, you know, a couple of hours, um, but it's really worth doing this sort of level of governance, even for the, for the, for a relatively small project um, to keep, to keep everything, keep everything on track. So in summary then, you know, running a small project is just the same really as running a, a, a larger project. And you still need to go through the same standard project management processes and use the same frameworks that you would, and you still need to document things uh, in the same way that you would a, a, a bigger project, but the most the important thing to say really is that you need to sort of adapt your adapt your approach and, and implement lightweight processes and lightweight documentation 
um, to, the, to the size of the project and the amount of time that you as a project manager have to spend on the project as well. So, you know, if you're handed a project that you've got to start from scratch, then, you know, start with the start with the, the standard processes and, you know, do all of those things and go through the project plan document and, and adapt that to the way that you, you know, you need to for, for the smaller project. And if you're, if you're handed a project that's already in flight, then do a project audit, um, you know, and then implement some really lightweight governance uh, to manage that process. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please leave comments below. I'd love to hear about how you're getting on with your, your small projects and running audits and all of those sort of things and taking projects over in flight, etc. So I'd love to hear how you're getting on. Um, please subscribe by clicking on the bell. If you want to find out more information, you can find us at the projectmanagementguide.com and uh, I'll see you in the next video.